Well, my buddy Taylor, let me read this story about a ballerina made of porcelain who just wanted to be free. A somewhat maniacal tinker who demanded obedience, but beauty he could not see. And an innocent girl who understood that free will is what separates the beast from you and me. In a sense, we are that dancer in that see-through glass prison so claustrophobic and small, dreading when our key will be turned or when our strings will be pulled again, so that our almighty tinker makes us walk, talk, dance, go to our knees, or even crawl. Dance, the tinker yells. You will dance and we give it our all and we never even doubt the situation we've been placed in. Even after all the times the faceless tinker picked our world up, shook it a little bit, and cracks form in our skin and we feel so bloody and mauled, we wonder if we'll ever be free of it all. Because who would question our creator of our prison, our reprobate God? Even after all the hurt he or she caused us, we will offer sacrifices to him. We will cheer and applaud. And this facade of beauty and wonder covers up his treatment so roughshod. But eventually we'll get tired of the foolishness, undeserving pain and cracks. And we will call out our deity on his fraud. And the smudges of our glass-blown snowy prison fade away. When we expect to see this demonic wad of evil and ugliness, we instead see something something quite odd. We see the familiar smile of selfishness that we have known for so long. We see the fiery eyes of anger that we feel whenever we've been done wrong. We are surprised to see this face, but we really have known all along. We have known since this translucent hell was created to whose face it belongs. Ours. We have caused us to be in this cell we desire to escape. We desire a hairline fracture we can kick hard enough to get through, a proverbial hole to one day gape, so we can go to a place where our dreams won't be destroyed and our thoughts won't be bound by tape. But since we've realized we are the ones keeping us here, there's nothing we can do. Escape plans go from mini schematics to a couple doodles. One, two, just a few. So we sit in the back of the globe and wait to dance, giving up dreams of a coup. Thinking thoughts like, no way out, I'm gonna be here forever, part of the ship, part of the crew. I might as well dance after all that I've been through. But as the days go by and dust starts to accrue, and you finally have gotten accustomed to your zoo, in all hopes of leaving this horrible place you have said adieu, one being looks at you and sees you in your turmoil and says, I know you, I love you. And you get up and stare, who, me? Come on. No one loves me. Look at what I have to go through. The being comes and sits with you and says, would you like to get away from this place? And I will bring you to a place where you are free to be who you are. And we are dumbfounded that anyone who would care enough to be near us. And we nod our heads with such gusto, our eyes seeing stars. So he tells us to brace ourselves because freedom can cost a few bruises and scars. And football spikes our prison and picks us up and holds us in his arms. And almost immediately do we wonder what new dance number or amount of time in our knees would constitute as a thank you to our savior, our hero, our morning star.